Well, I guess we probably should talk more about the actual project because we've gone like down random tangents. Um, one thing I, I did definitely want to ask about is so T two SDE. The SDE is System Development Environment. What does that actually mean in the context of this project? It means to uh, to develop firmware or embedded systems. Mm -hmm. And it's basically we took what we did was we took this popular IDE, like integrated development environment, and applied this to the whole Linux system. So basically it was meant to be the whole IDE for integrated system development, mm -hmm. because an IDE is just your one program, but that's basically compiling all your system. Um, and what T2 does is basically T2 bootstraps everything from, from out of nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, cross compiles, for example, Power, Power PC, Risk Five, and uh, Spark and Itanium, which is also why with so few developers we can support everything. It's also very low code, right? It's recently re realized it's actually a very low code um, packaging um, environment, um, where if you package stuff like Pipewire and Firefox, you usually need to write less, less, much, much less code. And in much more systematically sorted way, also with patches, like unbreaking GCC, and like for even we we try to patch stuff as as little as possible, mm -hmm. but because of all the constant changing environments and libraries, of course we have to patch stuff for new GCC, mm -hmm. for new libraries, um, or Risk Five, or Itanium, <laughs> restoring Itanium support, and so. But we we don't like patch graphics, we don't patch render wording, we only patch it when it's necessary, right. technically, and we also have all those patches nicely sorted in the source tree. Other distributions sometimes tar all the stuff up, so I find it much easier to work with them with many other systems. Um, others tar all the stuff together, then you always, as a developer, you need to untar this archive and, and pack it back in together. Some other distributions also don't version their, so everything in T2 is versioned, also the patches. Some other distributions and build systems maintain patches not versioned, meaning like GCC Linux patches, they come from unversioned, not in version control, like mirrors, like it's coming from distribution XYZ, mirror patches, whatnot. Mm -hmm. And um, not I in general don't like this because as a developer, I would always need to grab those patches first and they need to be on a mirror and stuff. So in T2, this was what Rock Linux has been 25 years ago and still is today, that everything is nicely sorted, as simple as possible. It's also scripted in shell. Mm -hmm. Some people find it low-tech, but most developers find it maintainable and readable. Mm -hmm. And it keeps everything. It's basically a built, very simple, minimal build system, kept as simple as possible to build all the 5,000 packages we have. So... If I wanted to set up T2SD on my system, what am I getting myself into? Like, where do, where do so I start and do... where do I go from there? Yeah, so you can just download a pre-built um, binary ISO. That's mm -hmm. like a gigabyte. It's relatively minimal, but it includes these days all of Xorg, Firefox, um, XFCE, and Wayland. Mm -hmm. um, that is probably pretty compact for what we deliver, including like I'm I'm basically live streaming from su such an ISO. Mm -hmm. um, you can just fully work on this. You have Firefox and then use it. Like it's super simple. It's not that much. I mean, given it's a text installer and you need to know a little bit about the inner workings of a computer, mm -hmm. it's not as simple as Mac OS, but it's, I wouldn't call it, it's, it's as simple as a BSD, right? Like sure. if you can, we, we probably need to make it more simple. We, we recently started to make it more simple, but it's, it's not super challenging. And from then, you can just install packages from source if you want it, like if you want to install some terminal or some shell or um, LibreOffice or other KDE and GNOME stuff, you can just as a BSD or a Gen2. Some people, by the way, call many call T2 the BSD of Linux distributions. That is okay. something what pretty many um, call us. And so you don't need to... Like it's basically as easy as NetBSD, OpenBSD, FreeBSD, or Gentoo. Um, and you don't need to, like obviously we don't expect normal users to rebuild their system. Um, and the benefit is uh, users get an up-to-date system and it's optimized for their CPU, right? Like unless you have a super slow vintage system, 
um, if you have some something halfway decent, because there's always a discussion like some distribution switching to the next x86-64 yes. dash version yeah. 3, 4, 5, 6, AVX 512 enablement stuff. So with T2, there is not such a discussion. You just emerge all your stuff for your native CPU if you want to and mm -hmm. get the highest performance even on PowerPC, MIPS, and Titanium. I'm curious about that, that BSD comparison, because I'm not really sure what you meant by that, like calling it the BSD of Linux distributions. Yeah, being yeah being simple and this um, install from source, right? You have this package source tree, and mm -hmm. like it's basically you have this pre-built minimal system um, that's quite similar to install. It's also like minimal and lightweight, and you just emerge the, the open source world there from your package source tree, which is pretty it's of course it's not derived from that but it's quite similar in concept mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay okay so i guess the obvious question is if it's source base you know the main source based distro that people go with nowadays is gen 2 what is it about the way that t2 sd does things that provides the words are hard sometimes what is <laughs> what is <laughs> We're going to try this again, slowly. What does T2SD do that would convince someone who is a Gen 2 user to maybe want to use it? Yeah, for users, it's a tough call, given that there are 2,000 new distributions. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> it's more for the professional uh, way, okay. right? If you want right, to right. ship a product, um, mm -hmm. security product, a, a virtualization, or like orchestration, right? Like your, your virtual mm -hmm. deployment, it's then probably more suited for um, developers mm -hmm. and like all those modern virtualization and um, like, yeah, you want to create a firmware. Um, okay, satellite top, satellite boxes are certainly out like, yeah, like like an AI box or <laughs> all the modern stuff, some mm -hmm. firewall appliance, some some storage server, all the different, like some, some Linux cube for, <laughs> Or the office or stuff, right, right. Um, then or like, any other like a, a, all the embedded stuff, right? Like you have any embedded project. I mean, we have we have even people using it for environmental controls, right? I am at, I'm and once we even did some project with UPS, right? Um, so like even UPS is is this parcel service they are using this like um, it's yeah. So for end users, it's it's tough. Mm -hmm. um, that's true. I would. So basically for developing systems, it's, I would, I mean, sure, I'm biased, but I I think the more simple and organized structure and the cross, sure, there is, in the meantime, like a decade later, there is some cross compile support agent to some cross gen or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't follow all those details. Um, so there is something, I don't know if it's in mainline gen or if it's some, so there might be something for cross compiling, but that's of course the main strength of being able. So all what might shock most people is that all those ISOs we have thirty six release. So we, we might have the most official supported CPUs and build um, variants. Mm -hmm. Build variants meaning alternative C libraries like Musil, the more minimal and potentially faster Musil or alternative C compilers like LVM Clang. So we have twenty five CPU architectures in thirty six variants like glibc, musl, and stuff. And that might be the most of all Linux distributions. And what is probably shocking most people is that I cross-compiled all of them on just one single Ryzen 1750X, uh, not even, I mean, sure, relatively high spec, but like I can build all 36 ISOs on T2, cross-compile them, Itanium and stuff, everything, mm -hmm. um, in, what was it, 24? I forgot if either 24, 48 hours, like less, less than two days, whatever it was. Maybe it was two days. Maybe it was 48 hours, but like on one single machine, right? And mm -hmm. the reason many other distributions struggle, even like Debian who want to support more architectures is because they mostly natively compile everything. Right. And then they can't support mm -hmm. MIPS or PowerPC anymore because they simply don't have fast hardware. And it certainly, it took me also quite quite a lot of work to make even Firefox, we can cross compile Firefox, right? Like meaning we compile Firefox for risk five on x86, right? It's cross compiling on one CPU for another. Um, and it it just took a lot of work, right? We do this for 20 years, like we did like 20 years ago, like yeah, 2003, 2004, 
we only could cross compile the base stuff and having like in the meantime i we could cross compile libreoffice and firefox rust um and that is certainly it it took ten thousands of hours of work to to keep all this like set it up and um, package and test and debug and uh, that's certainly quite some achievement including i even obs studio right i cross compiled obs studio for risk 5 mm -hmm. um and that's probably the biggest um, flagship feature of T2.